Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another PC cooling video for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm gonna be comparing some of the best fans designed for CPU coolers. But this shootout's gonna be a little bit different from some of the previous shootouts I've conducted and other reviewers have conducted as well. Typically, we all test on a radiator, find the best and call it a day and say, this is the best CPU cooling fan on the market. But in some preliminary data that I did share in a previous video, I found that this may not be the best approach because a liquid cooling radiator is not the same thing as an air cooling heatsink. So in this episode of the shootout, I'm actually gonna be testing on this heatsink. This is the NH-U12S from Noctua, very representative of what people are using out there, an extremely popular cooler, probably one of the top selling air coolers in history. Then in the second episode of the shootout, I will be testing on the H100i from Corsair. Again, very representative of liquid coolers on the market, probably the best selling liquid cooler in history. So again, I'm trying to be very representative here, choosing two coolers that a lot of people have used, or at least a lot of people have heard of. Now I have five fans on the bench today. These represent probably the best fans designed for CPU coolers. Some of them are well known to you. Some of them are actually brand new. Let's start with the Arctic P12. This is a jack of all trades fan. It has done extremely well in all of my roundups, often coming in second place because it's really good as a case cooling fan and a CPU cooler fan, but doesn't necessarily excel at either one. Now, Arctic has actually just come out with an ARGB version of this fan, and I'm very excited to be testing this. This just hit the market, and you know, I would expect it to perform similarly because the blade design is similar, but it does have some different engineering that has gone into it to allow it to have, of course, ARGB lighting, and that may have an impact on cooling. Next up, we have the Noctua NF-A12X25. Of course, this is a very well-known fan. It's got a lot of awards for me and a lot of other reviewers. It's not the best case fan out there, but it's very good on radiators. So it may be the winner in this roundup. We'll soon see. Now, next up, we have a brand new fan from Scythe called the Wonder Snail 120. Now, Scythe has a very long history in the PC cooling market, but it hasn't had a fan like this in a long time. Now, people who are very familiar with PC fans and the history of PC fans will know that a few of these fans on this bench resemble something called the Gentle Typhoon. This was kind of the be-all and end-all of fans about a decade ago. It was designed by Nidex Servo. It was licensed by a lot of companies. It's still licensed by some companies, but none of these are licensed designs. Now, Noctua has stated it feels that its NF-A12X25 is different from that Nidex Servo design. It's not a Gentle Typhoon clone. The Wonder Snail is not a Gentle Typhoon clone either, although Scythe actually previously did feature a Gentle Typhoon of their own, and that was just a licensed design. They sold it as a Gentle Typhoon. It was based on a licensed design by Nidex Servo. They have told me this is not a Gentle Typhoon clone. Finally, we have the Thermaltech Tough Fan 12, a lot of people have called this a clone of Noctua's. You know, I'm not going to get into that argument here. Frankly, this is probably a clone of the Nidex Servo Gentle Typhoon. And ultimately, I'm not here to, you know, try to differentiate between these and say someone's copying someone else or, hey, everyone's breaking the law. That's not the point. I just want to find the best fan. Here's a closer look at the lineup. Arctic's P12 and P12 RGB share a common design of five wide, heavily swept blades. The RGB version adds lighting to the hub and a ring around the edge of the blades that helps diffuse light and stabilize the blades at high RPM. The Nocto NF-A12X25, the Scythe Wonder Snail, and the Thermaltake Tough Fan 12 all look quite similar. They use nine slim blades. The Scythe is a little bit different because its blades spin clockwise rather than counterclockwise, but just like the Arctic fans, all these have blades that are heavily swept. So that differentiates all these fans from fans that I think are more for case fan cooling purposes. And in my test, I've found that fans with blades that are a little bit less curved actually do very well in case fan applications. Scythe is a master of case fan cooling, but this is not a case fan, okay? Now, Scythe is very clear. Their Wonder Snail is designed for radiators. But in my testing, I'm gonna see if it's designed for heat sinks, okay? Because again, even the manufacturers kind of equate these and say, hey, this is a radiator fan. All right, well, how does it work on a heatsink? That's what I'm gonna show you in this first episode using the NHU-12S. Before we get into the benchmarks, let me talk about my test methodology. Some things are similar to previous tests and some things are different. 
First of all, the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. I lock it at 4.2 gigahertz and 1.3 volts to avoid any fluctuations based on the boost algorithm. Then we have the position of the microphone and decibel meter. I've decided to set that up six inches away from the fans at a 45 degree angle to give you a very good sense of what these fans sound like, their audio quality, their tone. Now, a lot of people have said, why do you test like that? Why don't you test like at two feet? Well, that's how I do my case testing and my heat sink testing. But if you're watching a video about fans, you probably care what these sound like. And from two feet away, outside a chassis, you can't tell the differences in the tone in the way you can from six inches away. And if you're a user who's really interested in that tone of the fans, you'll notice that in a way that a microphone won't positioned two feet away. Other thing I should mention, is that I do have a new test methodology for the app I'm using, all right? I'm gonna use Cinebench R20 and nothing else. In the past, I've used CPU-Z and I've also done some idle benchmarks. In particular, I found the idle benchmarks not very useful because the temperature fluctuates a lot at idle and people get really worried, why is my CPU so hot at idle? Guys, it's doing something in the background. I don't care, you shouldn't care. I'm just dropping those, but I will give you the idle RPM, so minimum RPM, so you can kind of judge for yourself, is this gonna be low enough for me? All of these are very quiet at minimum RPM. Some of them do have a slightly lower RPM level, and so you can kind of extrapolate, well, is it gonna be quiet enough for me? So I am gonna show you performance at 35, 40, and 45 decibels if the fans get that loud, as well as maximum RPM. And I think you will be able to really come to a lot of conclusions about these fans based on those benchmarks. I'll start with the maximum RPM levels here. The Scythe Wondersnail 120 is a little bit ahead of the Nocto NF-A12X25, thanks to its higher RPM, about 250 RPM faster, in fact. And then the rest of the fans all group up in a pack behind those two liters. Now, do take note that I'm providing the decibel levels here, but in my decibel normalized tests, we're gonna see a little bit better accuracy in terms of which of these fans is really superior because you can't really tell if you don't hold that decibel level constant. But at maximum RPM, yes, the Scythe Wonder Snail does have the most headroom. Now, before I get into those decibel normalized results, let's take a look at the actual RPM ratings that were published for each of these fans and then what I found to be the minimum and maximum RPM for each of these fans. Starting with minimum RPM, I noted that Noctua's fans actually did not meet spec. They were actually quite a bit lower at minimum RPM than their spec, which is actually better than if it were the other way around. And you may be wondering, wait, isn't there just one Noctua fan in this test? Well, actually, if you had keen eyes and took a look at that previous chart, yes, I did include the NFF12. I'm using it as a baseline throughout this shootout because it's what's included with the NHU12S cooler. It's not a contender in this roundup, but it is gonna be in the benchmarks. Now, the other fans all met their minimum spec pretty much spot on, including the Arctic P12 ARGB, which has a zero RPM mode. That's something that's marketed by Arctic. It's official, it will hit zero RPM when you set it to zero percent on the PWM scale. The only fan in this roundup that had a minimum RPM that I would consider a little bit high was the Thermaltake Tough Fan 12. It was around 500 RPM. I think it's still quiet enough for most users, but sticklers for silence will want a little bit more adjustability and will probably want one of the other fans in this roundup. In terms of maximum RPM, there was a lot more variance. Noctua is actually most accurate with its NF-A12X25, which was pretty much spot on at 2000 RPM. A little less accurate with the Scythe Wonder Snail 120 and Thermaltake Tough Fan 12, both quite a bit slower than the maximum RPM. Whereas with the Arctics, they were both slower and faster, which just goes to show it's not really a brand by brand issue. It's kind of like variance within each sample. So if I took three or four different Arctic P12 ARGB fans, they'd probably all have a different maximum RPM. There's only so much I can do though, so I did just test one sample of each. Just keep in mind that you may not hit that maximum RPM that you think you will based on the specs. Let's move into those decibel normalized benchmarks. I'll start with 35 decibels at six inches, which is very, very quiet. Luckily, all the fans could hit that. Now, take note that the NFF12 is simply outclassed here. I really needed to spin that down quite a bit, and it's not a particularly effective design to start with, so it was a lot hotter than the other fans in this roundup that are more tailored for heat sink applications. I was a little bit surprised that the Thermaltake Tough Fan 12 was only at the same level as the Arctic Twins, whereas the Noctua NF-A12X25 and Scythe Wonder Snail 120 were out ahead of the pack, both hitting 
80 degrees here. And keep in mind, this is a pretty serious application. Cinebench R20, 145 watt load on a slim 120 millimeter cooler. All these fans are doing pretty well, but you can see there is headroom here to increase the capacity of that NHU-12S cooler simply by upgrading the fan from the out-of-the-box NFF-12. Let's move on to the 40 decibel normalized results, which I consider to be quite a reasonable level for constant use. For instance, if you're gaming or doing content creation where your CPU is under load, this level of noise is probably gonna be tolerable for most folks. And we see that these fans are pretty closely packed Although the Scythe Wondersnail 120 is a little bit ahead, followed closely by the Noctua NF A12X25, then the two Arctics and the Thermal Take are at 79 degrees, and at the back of the pack, not surprisingly, is the stock Noctua NF F12. What I found interesting, but not too surprising here, is that the NF A12X25, the Wondersnail, and the Tough N12 all spin at around the same RPM at this noise level. So although they aren't equivalent fans, they are making equivalent amounts of noise at around 1600 or 1650 RPM, and that's because they have very similar designs. One thing that is different in this test is the maximum RPM those three fans could hit. And in fact, in my 45 decibel noise normalized result, only the Noctua and Scythe Wonder Snow 120 could get fast enough, or you could say loud enough, to compete here. And here they are actually identical in performance. 45 decibels is relatively loud. It's actually the maximum RPM of the Noctua, and it's close to the maximum RPM of the Scythe Wonder Snail. And this is as loud as I would want to use any fan. So I'm not concerned about going higher than this, although the Wonder Snail can. And you may find a lot of fans that boast of extremely high RPM levels. I caution you about those. You probably don't want to use anything that's much louder than 45 decibels. And to show you why, I'm going to share with you audio samples of all these fans running at 40 decibels and then at maximum RPM. I also want to address a concern that people have had with Arctic fans regarding resonance. So listen here for some humming as I step down from 100%.
If you listened carefully, you probably heard a slight whistling. That's it. When I drop down to 50% PWM, it stops. All right, well, this was a lot of fun. There were some big surprises. There were also some big winners. I'll get to the winners in a moment, but first the big surprises. I thought between the two Arctic fans that the ARGB version would definitely fall behind because of the added complexity of adding lighting to a fan. But Arctic worked its magic again, and the ARGB version is actually a step ahead of the original P12, which is amazing because the original P12 is so good. Now, there is still a resonance issue. I have shared the audio samples with you. You come to your own conclusions about that. I am not hiding the ball. Some people have accused me of that in the past and said I wasn't clear about the resonance issue. I've actually made a bigger deal of it than any other YouTuber out there. I've also made a bigger deal of it with Arctic. They've told me, now on the record, this is an attribute of the design of the P12. They can't get rid of it. The P12 ARGB does have a slightly higher pitch resonance, and that's what I noticed. It was more of a whistle. Again, I gave you the audio samples and explained it there. If it's a deal killer for you, fine. But for me, I don't think it's actually that big an issue, particularly if you do fixed RPM. And rather than using, say, a curve, you use a stepwise fashion for your fan control. You won't notice that fluctuation as much. That's where it really comes up when it kind of goes back and forth between, say, 1200 and 1400 RPM over and over again. You'll pick up that hum. Now, in terms of other surprises, the Tough Fan 12 was a step behind. In fact, tied with the P12 ARGB, which is not a bad thing, but it's not going to be the winner. In a previous roundup on radiators, it actually did do just as well as the Noctua, and a lot of people were amazed at that. Some people bought it based on that, and some people were pleasantly surprised, and some people did complain to me and said that they broke down. Now, I have not had this fan break down, but you know I haven't been testing it 24-7 for months. If you do have issues with the Tough N12, I'm sure Thermaltake will back you up on that. It does have a warranty. It's a big company. It's not going to try to get away from you. Um, I can't judge the quality issues. But I can say this is not the winner this time around, even though it did really well in my initial roundup. So we've got Noctua, the defending champ, and we've got the Wonder Snail. The ultimate winner here is the one that I'm going to recommend to you, though, and that is the Wonder Snail. Now, in two of my three decibel normalized tests, it was tied with the Noctua, and one of them it was ahead, and it also has a higher maximum RPM, so it did have more ultimate high-level performance at the cost of noise. So 50 decibels normalized, it was quite loud, but it didn't lose anything at the lower decibels, so I call that a win-win. You know, you're tied with a Noctua at lower decibels. You have a little bit more headroom if you want to push your performance, push your thermal load on your CPU or overclocking. Scythe gives that to you, and it looks awesome, right? This is the blacked-out fan you guys have been waiting for for years, ever since this came out in 2018. You guys have been asking for a fan that looks like this. Here it is. It's blacked out. It's awesome. It'll look good in any build, and... Here's the clincher. It's $17. The new price of this Noctua is now $33 after a recent price increase up from $30. And frankly, in the US, this is selling mostly for $45. Guys, sorry. I mean, all you Noctua fans out there, I love you all. I've been recommending this for a year. It's no longer going to be my recommendation. The Wonder Snail is it. It's $17. If you need an upgrade to your heatsink, there is no other choice. This is number one. Except if you need ARGB. And then I go with the P12 ARGB. It's a great fan. It's a step behind the Wonder Snail, but it's the same price, $17, and it gives you that cool lighting, really great ARGB implementation. You choose whichever you want. It's $17, and basically there's nothing else to consider. But there was one reason where I go with the P12, and that is if you need a bunch of fans for a case and your heat sink or cooler, uh, this is going to be a great choice because you can get that five pack for 35 to 40 bucks. Again, the price has increased a bit, but that's kind of just par for the course these days. But yeah, if you need like a bunch of fans, you can get these. By the way, speaking of value packs, there is a value pack of the P12 ARGB. I think it's like 43 bucks for three. So you got some great choices here. But again, this is just episode one in my follow-up test on the 240mm H100i from Corsair. We're going to see if the rankings remain the same. I suspect they won't. And that's what's exciting about this. This is the reason I'm doing this in this heatsink roundup on the U12S. The Wonder Snail is the winner. The runner-up is the P12 ARGB. And that is the end of the story until the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, please give me a like and subscribe. Post your comments down below. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.